Steve Martin is one of our favorite actors. Separately as kids and together as a couple, Steve Martin's work has been central to our upbringing. From his goofiest comedies to his more serious work later in his life, his characters, his ability, and his films are legendary, iconic, and still just as fabulous today as the day they came out. Sure, a couple of his movies don't resonate with us, and every actor has their tumble. But more often than not, Steve Martin has consistently had triumph after hilarious triumph, cementing his legacy in our minds and hearts for decades. Though it was a very difficult task after watching all of his filmography, we have narrowed down our top 10 favorite movies by the funny man himself, Mr. Steve Martin. But before we get into our list, we wanted to share a couple of honorable and dishonorable mentions from Steve Martin's career. The dishonorable mentions include his roles as Inspector Clouseau in the Pink Panthers 1 and 2, his role as Mr. Chairman in the Looney Tunes back in action, and his role as Henry Clark in the Out of Towners. And now for a few honorable mentions of movies that just missed our list are Jonas Nightingale in Leap of Faith, Ray Porter in Shop Girl, and Larry Hubbard in The Lonely Guy. And now here's our top 10 favorite Steve Martin movies. Number 10, House Sitter. Goldie Hawn and Steve Martin made more than one movie together, the best of which is House Sitter. This is an unconventional romantic comedy, and Steve Martin and Goldie Hawn have great chemistry and excellent comedic timing with one another. While the premise might be crazy, a lot of laughs are produced in this rather short comedy. Despite a lot of awkward situations, which are made all the more hilarious by Steve Martin's juggling act between sincerity and comedy, and Goldie Hawn's constantly having to fill in the gaps left by Steve Martin's character. This movie is really well done and still relatable even in its zaniness. Number 9. Roxanne. This film is a modern-day reimagining of Cyrano de Bergerac, with Steve Martin himself playing the Cyrano de Bergerac character, renamed to C.D. Bales. Roxanne is quintessential Steve Martin, who gives a worthy performance, using his signature witty, smart, yet completely silly comedy in what we believe is an underrated movie that we enjoy watching very much. Number 8. L.A. Story this movie is a must-see for anybody who has ever been to or has ever lived in L.A. It kind of laughs in the face of the culture of Los Angeles, but it does so in a lighthearted, charming, fantastical, and eccentric way. As per usual, Steve Martin offers a wonderfully funny and very genuine performance as Harris K. Telemacher. His charisma works wonders in this type of film, and the movie serves as an homage to 1990s Los Angeles and the culture and lifestyle of those who lived there, including things like Sunday brunch, where you're always fashionably late, the general obsession with celebrities, and a restaurant full of waiters who are aspiring actors, and of course, the referential humor involving the misquoted works of William Shakespeare. Steve Martin does it all here. Number seven, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. This film showcases Steve Martin and Michael Caine in top form. The two share great chemistry and a witty repartee together. Martin also adds a level of goofy physical comedy while Kane acts as a straight man to Martin's buffoonery. Their dynamic offers consistent laughs throughout the entire film, though some of Steve Martin's bits wouldn't be exactly PC today. Despite that, we still love this movie and think it's hilarious. Why are they remaking it? Number 6. Father of the Bride I grew up with Father of the Bride and have very fond memories of watching this movie with my parents. This is one of my favorite Steve Martin movies of all time. Martin does an excellent job filling the role of an overprotective, zany parent at odds with throwing his daughter her dream wedding, but simultaneously doesn't want to let his daughter go. There is a lot of awkward humor here, and it's still hilarious even though it's almost always due to his bad judgment as George Banks. The situations might be zany, but there's an underlying tenderness to it all. Though some might see George's actions as abhorrent and pushy and rude, just remember this is a comedy. We really enjoy watching this movie, and though it takes a more traditional stance on weddings, it still has excellent chemistry, tons of laughs, and a really great charm to it all. Number five, Parenthood. Parenthood is a tremendous yet emotional film filled with some of our favorite actors. That includes Steve Martin, who is as funny as he's ever been in his pursuit to be the loving parent his father never was. This movie is believable, realistic, and cohesive, even though there are several different stories intertwining in one hell of a film. Number 4. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles 
Every year at Thanksgiving, we watch Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Okay, it might be one of the only Thanksgiving movies, but boy, did they get a good one. This is one of the funniest comedies to come out of the 80s. The dynamic between Steve Martin and John Candy is nothing short of brilliant. These two fine comedic actors do what they do best, and it's twice the fun. The scene at the airport car rental where Steve Martin drops the F-bomb over 20 times? Sheer genius. It's one of the best scenes in any comedy movie. Everything that can go wrong does go wrong for these characters. He and John Candy go through some crazy situations, but in the end, it all wraps up in a very tender and soulful bow with a hefty dose of hilarity along the way. Number three, Little Shop of Horrors. This musical comedy is one of our favorites, and even though Steve Martin has a relatively small role in this as Dr. Orrin Scrivello, DDS, we absolutely love it. He has one of the more memorable moments in the movie with his song Because I'm a Dentist, which leaves us in stitches every time we watch it. Plus, the special effects work from Jim Henson's Creature Shop is absolutely brilliant. Number two. Three amigos. It is absolutely abhorrent that Three Amigos has a 44% on Rotten Tomatoes. You heard that right, 44%. What kind of world are we living in? We know these older comedies are not well received, but a 44% is a mere pittance compared to what this movie deserves. Watching this movie now, we still love it. The comedy is silly, it's loaded with tons of witty dialogue, and the occasional awkward fish-out-of-water scenario, elevated by the genius of Chevy Chase, Martin Short, and of course, Steve Martin as three out-of-work actors who get roped into a situation they never intended. We still bust up laughing every time we hear the song My Little Buttercup or Blue Shadows and Are You the Singing Bush? is one of the funniest lines in comedy history. The reason the comedy works so well is because of these talented comedians and their chemistry with one another. Only a handful of movies have been able to achieve this level of brilliance. It offers a plethora of laughs and even if you're a dirt-eating piece of slime, a scum-sucking pig, a son of a motherless goat you'll probably enjoy this movie it's a sweater and our number one favorite steve martin movie of all time is the, the jerk. jerk lolo and i have a personal connection with the number one movie on our list right away we get a sense of the silliness we are in for as steve martin's character navin johnson looking homeless and disheveled utters the words i was born a poor black child Words that would clearly never fly today. But just remember, this movie was made in the 70s, and it was true in a manner of speaking. Steve Martin is able to seamlessly combine the witty and smartly satirical with the random and downright absurd. The Jerk showcases Martin at his absolute best. This film offers an endless amount of laughter, whether it be from jokes interwoven within the dialogue, or the fact that Bernadette Peters, who plays Navin's love interest, randomly produces a coronet on a date at the beach. There's an endearing charm to the naivete of the character of Navin Johnson, and we absolutely love it. This is our favorite Steve Martin film and one we feel like we have to watch every year to reabsorb its brilliance. There you have it, our top 10 favorite Steve Martin movies. What are your favorite Steve Martin movies? We would love to know in the comments below. And thank you very much for watching our video. May we have your watch when you are dead? If you're into the social media thing, please follow us all over the internet. We're at Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter at Lolo Loves Films. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like this video, if you like it, of course. And until next time, good night, Ned. Bye.